Hello, welcome to Take 10 on Tuesdays with the Tennessee Tribune. We are doing a special event today. It is Tuesday, September 27th. Last night, Monday, September 26th, was the first presidential debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. An historic event, the first time a woman is, is the nominee for a major party, and the first time a businessman who has no political experience is also the nominee for a party. We and our special guests today are to my left, State Representative Brenda Gilmore. Good, Welcome. Good morning and thank you. All right. And City Councilwoman Sharon Hurt. Good morning. Welcome. And City Councilman Sam Coleman. Thank you. Welcome thank you. to all three of you. Thank and you. And so let's go right to it. Who won? Hillary. <laughs> you uh, think so? And Hillary without a doubt. Without a doubt? <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, you think Donald Trump won, really? No, okay. really. Okay, so tell it's us why. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. He Come won. Come on, Sam. Well, listen at me. He won because he got out of there without saying anything. We have three debates going on. And he got out of there with virtually not doing anything but what he's always done. If Hillary wouldn't have done what she did, then we would have said she had a bad night. We were expecting that. But look at the polls and look where America is right now. See if she'll get a tremendous bump off of last night. What we've experienced, she had a tremendous lead coming out of the Democratic National Convention, right? right. And it has dissipated. Mm -hmm. The reason I say he won is because there are just as many people on the other side jumping up today as there were yesterday. And in order for her to win, it has to be a constant, constant barrage of this because he doesn't bring anything to the table. He doesn't answer any questions. And America's letting him off the hook with it. Okay. And as long as he can continue that, in a sense, he's tying up the game mm -hmm. with no real experience of spending any money. Oh, okay. All I'm, right. And I'm really Oops. reluctant to say this because I know people always accuse us of playing the race game. But a lot of it has really has to do because she is the first female that's running for president of the United States. Yes. And we have to get our arms around that and grassless. She's clearly the most qualified. Absolutely. She served as a senator, she served as secretary of state, and also first lady. But for some reason, as Americans, we went in the expectation, with the expectations of very high for her and very low for Donald Trump. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think? Well, I, I, I just totally um, believe that Hillary wanted hands down. She was obviously very prepared, mm -hmm. and I think that Trump was arrogant and pompous to the utmost, and he was not prepared. He didn't really answer any questions, and I just don't think that he was a good, it doesn't matter, just him showing up, the Republicans are going to vote for him anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So I don't think that he has... You mean the debate doesn't matter? The debate or? doesn't really matter. Okay. I don't believe anything that he says or, he, or what he does. I think that uh, Representative Gilmore is correct that they are going to be against her simply because she's a woman. So it didn't sway, the debates you don't think swayed uh, um, undecided voters one way or the other? I think, no. I think that his base will continue to support him regardless of what he does. And probably Hillary's base will continue to support her regardless of what she says or does. But there are some undecideds I believe may have made their minds up last night to come over to Hillary. Because obviously, as Council Lady Heard said, he was not prepared. Mm -hmm. And that's an insult to Americans when you are running for the highest office, not only in the United States, but in the world. Right. And you come to a debate, the very first one, and you haven't prepared yourself. I thought that was a very insulting and he was very insulting and condescending to her he interrupted her 51 times right. 51 times 51 okay. times right. mm -hmm. okay and now the trump side is saying she was attacking him constantly do you all think that was true as well yeah i think she made some good points in, in attacking him and addressing uh some of the issues that he um where he's weak mm -hmm. Um, but I thought that's what the debate was about. Right. And where is he weak? Um, one of the first questions uh, that Lester Holt, who was the moderator last night, um, asked was about achieving prosperity. And I 
that is an area where I thought maybe Hillary was very prepared right. in laying out what she planned to do. Mm -hmm. And how do you think the two of them came off? It really because resonated with me because she talked about really trying to uh, build up the middle class yes. and particularly our uh, young people who are in college come out of college burdened down with student loans and I really appreciated her talking about that she was working on a program for HBCUs and for other college students so that they would not be burdened down. Uh, I don't think he gave that very much thought at all of how he could bolster it. Everything seemed to be about him mm -hmm. and uh, his uh, rich friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the trade agreement, he seemed right. to really uh, be stuck on that, I thought, mm -hmm. even with other answers. Mm -hmm. Councilman? What did you well, think? yeah, and he particularly pointed out that NAFTA was signed by uh, President Clinton, her husband, and he declared, like a lot of other people, that NAFTA was a failure. I'm not sure if it was or not, but he locked in on that. Um, the only thing that he brought to the table on that issue is the success that he's had. And that's just not quite enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about world success. The success success he's had as a, as as a, a businessman. Business man, right. Mm -hmm. And that's just not enough to uh, get business done worldwide. And he just doesn't have the experience that, even in business negotiation, he sounds like a card player at a card table, that everything is about a deal. And I think um, America in the end will see that we just can't have a president that's willing to cut deals. Because if it was that easy, a lot of people would have fixed it. Just like health care. If it was that easy, we'd have been at health care. But it took a phenomenon and it took a point in time in our history and life to make it come through. And, you know, just to add, just going back for half a second, you know, when I first started off, I say who won. Right. Well, when I first started off, I said the same thing that, that represented Gilmore and Chen um, and Councilor Ed Hurt, my uh, fellow council member said. You see, because um, there's such thing as organized confusion. And as long as you tie people up long enough and get out of it, mm -hmm. really and truly you're winning because you don't have anything to begin with. Mm -hmm. So he's held America up. He's went through primary and 16 candidates. And look yes. what he's gotten. Yes. Because he's talked he's about that. So it's organized confusion. And in a sense, they're winning that. Look at the poll. How did he become 5149? After that tobacco in the Republican It's pretty amazing. In, mm -hmm. in so in the sense, you got to watch when you look at just the sheer emotions of a night where people say you're the shopping. Where American minds are and where they cast their vote. Mm -hmm. I hope they're wrong about the polls, but somebody's going to keep winning. Yeah, the polls seem to change every day. Um, so, and they do try to do instant polls and how people have them hold something. and how they were feeling. I was watching some of the uh, results from that and I thought, okay, so that's how you felt at the moment. Mm -hmm. But we've all had a chance to kind of sleep on it a little bit and come back and reflect. And I, you know, I, I still think that Hillary's demeanor was, Absolutely. she was very poised. Absolutely. Uh, she did not seem to give in to his attacks, mm -hmm. which he continued to attack. He would lean into the mic uh, there was one point that he was making when the question came up about why won't he release his taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you all remember? And I thought that that was her greatest moment, actually. Oh, really? Why? She, yeah, I thought she hit the ball out of the park with that because she mm -hmm. just went very calmly right. and went through each reason why uh, she Americans, of mm -hmm. course, is why he doesn't. One is he's not as rich as he thinks, and that, as, as people he as he says right. he is, right. and mm -hmm. that matters a lot to him how rich he is. Right. Uh, the other is that he doesn't give any money to, to charity, charity. Mm -hmm. but he, he says he does. Yes, mm -hmm. and that he doesn't give any money to federal. Uh, taxes. Right. You're going to pay any federal taxes. Well, he says he's smart. Uh, that's where he exactly. leaned in and said he's yeah, yeah, yeah. smart. smart. And he's business. And that's the thing is that for, as president, you have to be compassionate also. Right. And I saw no compassion whatsoever. He kept referring to things as that's business, that's smart, that's deal, you know. Mm -hmm. And that you cannot do that. You cannot address pos um, poverty. Right. And achieve prosperity without having some compassion for others. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and I just thought that that was just um, horrible uh, with the way he conducted himself. And, and a lot of things, uh, your silence, uh, his facial expression spoke a lot. Mm -hmm. yes. Whether his mouth opened, his facial expressions gave it all in. And, and I think he was poor. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councilman, mm -hmm. you want to add? Well, I, I think both of the comments were, you know, were appropriate and well taken. Um, I think that the thing, the reason I keep going back to it is because, you know, there's a certain segment out there 
that is really leaning towards a change of some kind. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that's frightening. As smooth as Hillary was, as prepared as she was, why are the numbers where they are? Mm -hmm. And again, I keep going back to if I can do nothing long enough and get this thing within inside of a few days and drop a bomb, why can you continue to threaten? Next time I'm going to attack Bill. He's wanting everybody to think he has something up his sleeve, and there's just nothing there. And in a sense, it's like mass confusion, but I'm winning on it. Uh, nothing he said philosophically meant any sense. He has no basis for ISIS. He has no structure for our taxes. Nothing. Right. So At one point, he threw in um, a point about Rosie O'Donnell, and I thought, I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. Right. And, and it was a question um, that yeah. Hillary was talking about, what he had said Since about the, women. Right. And, 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 the Latino and, and then he honed in on one particular woman. Yeah, because he's just so demeaning no, no to women. The one thing he did not do that he could have, and that was forced Hillary to talk about her emails and all of that. That's something that he did not press on, and I'm not sure. It never came out clear why he did not do that. But speaking back to what Councilman Coleman is saying, it is frightening. And, and just as I, I was saying that it doesn't matter what he does or what he says, I don't think it matters what Hillary or what we do. Mm -hmm. It matters because you have those people who are just straight racist and we are, this world is in a world of trouble. I mean, we need prayer mm -hmm. for sure. We need to unite for sure and come together and make things better for us locally and hopefully that will then grow until we get to a point where you can see us all coming mm -hmm. together. And I think some of it has to do with the picture he paints of America too, that he is creating an atmosphere of fear. And when people are scared or fearful, then sometimes they're looking for someone to come and to save them. And mm -hmm. he's painted himself as that savior who can come and save the world and make everything right. I mean, to, um, he talks about making America great again, but then to say that we are like a third world country. Exactly. I mean, how could you talk about America like that? We still are. Uh, well, well, that sounds like slavery, slavery to me. I mean, making it great again is, is taking us back to slavery where they were, where, you know, the wealthy were wealthy and the poor were very poor. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that that's no bright, uh, way for for us you know in a world like that i think african americans should be offended on two fronts when you talk about chicago in particular we talked about three thousand deaths we right. talked about four thousand yes. dying under the president and um you know you pointed at one particular city mm -hmm. and that was kind of ronnie manuel who was the mayor there two-term mayor there i mean that was a direct slap in the face that we should be upset about the second thing is when hillary attacked him over the lawsuits in which uh, he was said to have discriminated. Then he's, his only claim is that um, he settled the case right, and he right. didn't plead guilty and not guilty. Why didn't he defend that by saying, I am not a racist, mm -hmm. here's my record on things, but he didn't. He's allowed to brush past things that are important to us. Mm -hmm. And it's real important that we peel back the onion because we're looking for more. We're looking for a real opportunity to continue the progress we've made. And he's looking for a real opportunity to take us back further. Mm -hmm. If a man will build a wall, he'll build a boat. And that boat is for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he, he, his, what he didn't say. That's, that's the point. You know, he didn't. It's, he the, code, it's the coded it. language. That's right. Right. And we're letting him get away with it. And when we come out and you think, oh, you won, you won the number. Okay, look at the Dow. Look at the needle that's moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you could read Romney and Brock last time, the needle was correct. Yes. Okay. And if this needle is correct, we're showing in some polls 49, 51, some polls, somebody's out there. Right. Yeah. And again, there's more reason why we really need to come together. That's yes. right. <laughs> and shouldn't fall for the okie doke of staying home and not, not voting. Right. Right. What really uh, concerned me, though, about this whole uh, birthism conversation, yes. here, it reminded me a lot. Cool. He made a comment that President Obama should be glad and I think he said America should be glad that, that he was the one forced, forced him to, to present a birth certificate. And I thought about, you know, even when slavery was occurring in um, 
blacks would travel from plantation to plantation. Mm -hmm. They had to carry on them Identity. their yes, mm -hmm. their credentials mm -hmm. to prove who they were. Exactly. So that's really kind of the position or place that he had put President Obama in by uh, D. Uh, legitimizing him and saying he was an American right. and the only way that he could prove he was an American was by producing his birth certificate right. and no other president have we, have we ever done that for. No. And carried on for four years. Five right. years. Four and years. still has not apologized. Mm -hmm. All he said was he was born in America. Let's move on. Right. And see, right. that's the thing that I think African Americans should be incentivized. I'm not talking about some of the other issues. I think um, student loan, those issues about discrimination, we need to hone in on particular issues that affect African Americans because we can depend on what they might call a liberal media to export some of the other ideas. But what we should be honing on are things that affect us directly. That's what we should be trying to tell people about. Latino, African American people that can decide this right, we need to peel back the money and let's talk about what affects us daily. I like the smooth presentation, I like being prepared, but I need to know what affects me, what is the difference, so people can have an easy choice. Did either of them get to that point though? Did Hillary get to that? Or well, I, mean, I think I she talked Hillary. about it more so than, than Donald Trump did last night. She talked about student loans, she talked about um, a break for a middle class family, mm -hmm. a plan that will grow us up, not take us from top to down, but from middle up, and thinking about those who are on the lower echelon. And uh, criminal reform, that's very important to us because she called it out just as it was in front of white America and those are the things we need to hone in because chances are if you are Latino, African American male, you're not going to get the same kind of benefit as a Caucasian. She had the guts to say that yeah, on national she did, TV. She did. And Maybe it was the Delta Red she had on. I know. She Whatever did. it was, it was she lower. She came out <laughs> and read, read red the rumble, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. she was and going, red is on women is considered a power, power. Um, yeah. so yeah. And she looked powerful. Right. She did, she uh -huh. did. And, and she, she sounded powerful. She yeah. sounded very prepared. I was I was very pleased. Mm -hmm. uh, I was. On, on, on every hand, I mm -hmm. thought that she had uh, studied very hard. She had, um, she was, she was, she was very good. And what right. does um, Mr. Trump mean when he says she doesn't look presidential? Right. Oh, he's the one that didn't yeah, look presidential. Oh, and that was presidential and also, uh, the they appearance. talk about the right. appearance he and the temperament. Was stamina. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, what he was, I thought, and, and I, I'm going to be just sharing. I thought he was saying that she got some health issues that you don't know. She don't have the stamina to take it. She doesn't have it all. But I think she responded quite adequately when she talked about what she has done as Secretary of State, right. the amount of questions she had to take, how she's done business around mm -hmm. the world. So I think she answered it. But I think the look thing was going toward you are not fit because you are not qualified. You may have health issues. You may have this and that. Talking about the incident when um, she fainted, uh, almost fainted. Right. He's trying to get, he and um, the guy from New York, I forget the former mayor's name, trying Giuliani. to get people to buy it. New, uh, Giuliani. 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 Trying to get somebody Giuliani. to buy into health. I, you know what, I didn't think it was about the health and I, I thought it was the one of those not saying anything. He was speaking about being a woman. I'll take that right away. You know, well. is yes. that it was not about the health. I mean, mm -hmm. many of us I mean, Cheney, how many, how many heart attacks did he have while he was in office? Right. You know, so I, I don't think that that was it. I think he was saying that she was not fit because she was a woman. And then he came back and said that it was stamina. Mm -hmm. um, and originally he had said it was the way she looked. looked and then he said no, right. stamina. Right. So yes. was right. that a lie? Right. I, yeah, I yeah, think it was it as, he, as he was creating um, an image between... Male, strong, female, weak. That's, Absolutely. Yeah, that's the message that came across mm -hmm. uh, to me. And but as she talked about enduring childbirth too, to me, that would have let them know because that is not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. right. You know, mm -hmm. and and um, and and I just I just thought that if she had thrown that in there, especially since he was trying to say something derogatory about women, mm -hmm. that is one of the things that. Uh, I think where women really have uh, resilience mm -hmm. and yes. they have endurance, fortitude, and all of those things that it takes. Um, and, and we're co-creators mm -hmm. of yes. people. And she had mentioned that she endured 11 hours of right. grueling testimony. Right. I thought she was pregnant. I don't know. 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 I don't know.
yeah. man or woman who yes. can endure that. Right. That could is be something. very stressful. Yes. Very, very stressful. Yes. So I think she can understand the question quite well. You know? mm -hmm. Yes, I was glad she apologized for the emails last yeah. night. Yes, and didn't try to make any excuses. Exactly. She just right. said, "I take responsibility. I'm sorry. I regret it." And if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't do it that way. Right. He tried to count a little bit. Well, I'll release my tax when you release your 30000 email. Well, right. the email's supposed to be gone, right? right? So how would she be able to produce it, right? Does that mean I won't release my taxes? Right. And that goes to your point about right. the confusion. That is that's that exactly it. To, you know, I look at things a little right. bit different sometimes because mm -hmm. I realize that sometimes people are not strong. What they're trying to do is confuse you, bamboozle you, mm -hmm. and let the time slip away. And at the last second, it's like a boxer coming with the last minute of the round. But the whole round, you've just been getting away. And all of a sudden, in the last 10 seconds, you flurry and everybody think, look, he's doing okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How right. can he have done okay? He wasn't prepared. Right. He mm -hmm. was not. But he was purposely not prepared because that's not how you operate. He's he's the kind of guy to tell people what to do. Okay. He doesn't listen. All right. Well, we're um, coming close to the end. I know this has been a great discussion, mm -hmm. but I'd like to hear one more point uh, from each of you about how you felt about last night's uh, debate. Well, uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was exciting from the very beginning to the very uh, end. I think it set the stage for part two. Uh, debate number two, and I also thought that the uh, moderator, Lester Ho, did a very good job of not letting either one of them off the hook when there was a question and they didn't fully uh, address it or answer it. He came back with uh, a second person. Signing well, I, you know, I kind of thought Lester was a little too easy. I, I wanted him to be a little bit more um, forceful. Okay. In, 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 in his moderation. So controlling um, controlling and you know more, right because not I, letting them actually go at each other. Right. And I, I felt like Trump interrupted entirely too much. Not only did he interrupt Hillary, but he interrupted Lester. Mm -hmm. Or and he would refute Lester, no, you're wrong. No, you're wait a minute. You know right. to me. Mm -hmm. I think that he should have stopped one second. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just like when you got the boxing matches going right. and the referee said, wait a minute, hold up, stop it, I'm going to you this, that, and that. I thought he should have done that and said, I'm the one in control of this. Now we can move to the next point. Mm -hmm. It's what I would have liked. But I really thought that, um, that Hillary knocked it out the park. I loved her wittiness. I loved the fact that she talked about the trumped up trickle down economics. All of those things were quite uh, clever, mm -hmm. and and for her to be able, they, they just showed the the time that she put into it, and I was very pleased. Okay. Well, um, I, clearly, I think round one was won won by Secretary Clinton. However, this is a three round match. It's like a nine round boxing match, and believe me, they're prepared. And the setting is going to be different. It's going to be a different kind of debate. It's going to be right. like a community forum. Mm -hmm. it, this might lend itself to. A different kind of attack on both parties uh, part. However, uh, I continue to tell you that they're not as dumb as they want to be. They knew exactly that she would probably take this round and they concede to that. We just want to get in and get out and watch the numbers stay where they are. He said it best this summer when he said, I could walk out in the middle of uh, New York and kill somebody with a gun and people still vote for me. It's that mentality on the ground and getting people out. She's got to win all three in order to be effective. Round one, clear. We'll give that to you, right? Mm -hmm. But trust me, I know those guys on the other side. So does everybody in this room. Mm -hmm. Because we've all ran against people of a different party. And they are ruthless and they are going to work. And round two is not going to be like round one. Yes, she won round one, clearly, right? Okay. But watch, watch the stars, watch the numbers, because okay. that'll tell you the real thing. Okay. All right. Well, I thank all three of you today thank you. for this conversation. This was a great conversation. Hope to do it again for following the next debate, which is October 9th. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll try to pull everybody together again. Thank uh, you. Have a good conversation mm -hmm. then. Thanks, Thanks for that.